Welcome in, everybody. Richie and Rob from the great folks at Bet Parks. I'm Rob Ellis, along with my guy, John Richie. John, wish we were uh, we were kicking around some some <laughs> a win and looking forward to the divisional round and all that good stuff, but we're not. We are not. Um, you know, we talked about it last week, some of the things that had to happen for this team to win and advance, and certainly it didn't happen. And, you know, what they were trying to tell us for the past six, seven weeks Maybe we should have listened a little bit more. And uh, the game Monday night against the Bucks was really emblematic of a, of a lot of the issues they've had all season. So I'll start with that, John. How did we get here, man? How did it fall from ten and one to to where we are right now? I think a lack of plan for the blitz was probably our biggest downfall this mm -hmm. season. And uh, a big part of that was defenses were playing differently this mm -hmm. season because they'd had uh, all of last you know offseason to to kind of get some thoughts together that you know they, they could throw some ideas out there and, and throw a, a bunch of ideas against the wall, see what sticks to stop the RPO, the the ride and decide, the the read zone. And uh, they had new ideas this season. And we were we were behind in terms of staying up with the Joneses, just in terms of like basic West Coast concepts, picking up blitzes. We left that stuff in the past. It was it was controversial uh, to uh, go with the blitz plan that we chose because it was basically Jalen is incredibly talented and we're going to put a lot on you, Jalen, a lot on your athleticism. And we're going to take away a lot of the traditional stuff that is tried and true in this league. And it didn't work. You know, it's tried and true in this league, the West coast, the blitz pickup, all those, all those concepts are there because they've worked for 50 years. You know, what we did this year, it did not work. So much so that we're 0 for 9 on third down, plus 0 for 2 on yep. fourth down. We were 0 for on conversions in this game. That, that That's the biggest game of the season. Mm -hmm. You were 0 for 11 converting on third and fourth down. That's pathetic. But, John, here, here's my question. We had and the the zero for eleven on third down and fourth down was was even a new little twist they put on things. But the, as far as the blitz things go, thing goes, it's been happening all year. Um, is it an arrogance that you won't change, or is it an inability? Are you not able? What what is it? And you know, again, it was a game where it was utterly predictable, terrible on, on, against the blitz, not good on third down, could get off the field, poor tackling. We've seen these issues all season, and they never got corrected. How I does think it, Sirianni I think it must account have been for that? Stubborn, stubborn. Hey, we believe in our guys. Uh, we've heard Nick Sirianni say, "All I know how to do is double down on what I know," and I think that's what he did. I can't imagine that that's all that he knows about blitz pickup because he's an offensively minded guy and a wide receiver himself. He should know a lot more about the sight of Jess, uh, so that we should be able to do them in a game and, and we shouldn't have guys running routes that collapse on top of one another. Uh, that just horrendous. It looked horrendous and it shouldn't look that horrendous. It was really troubling. All right. So uh, how major do the changes need to be? I, I mean, are we, are we going from head coach? Are you looking at the head coach returning and coordinators going bye-bye sans, you know, Michael Clay with special teams, how, how severe are the changes that are necessary here? I think we need different coaches teaching our young quarterback. I think Jalen took a step back this year. Everyone should concur. And that is, that's horrendous that we cannot have that take place. That's the last thing in the world we can have. So I'd love to have the next up and coming young uh, mind or the next up and coming old mind or just the next the next mind who's great at training quarterbacks, the next mind who can get Jalen where he needs to go instead of crashing and burning like he did this season with Nick Sirianni and Nick's staff. I want a smart staff that knows how to develop Jalen Hurts. And that should be the entire focus during this interview process. 
how do you develop Jalen? How do you bring the best out of this young man? Because there's so much to bring out, and we saw none of it this season. All right, I think you may have answered it, but I, my question, my follow-up was going to be, how much of this is on Jalen versus the coaching that he's receiving, in your estimation? It's both. Mm. Jalen's responsible to learn, do a better job. That was unacceptable. Uh, I'm sure we'll learn a lot, hear a lot of rumors and whatnot, guys who were upset with Jalen, guys Jalen was upset with. I don't know what's true and what's not. I know it looked funky. I know it was a mess. I know that this coaching staff allowed that turmoil to take place. That's yet another reason why I feel like it's time to move forward. Uh, But the biggest reason for moving forward is we need to get this quarterback right. Philosophically, um, they're an organization that has never hired a, at least Jeffrey Lurie has never hired a guy who's already had previous head coaching experience. They want you to be collaborative. They don't usually go for the sort of autonomous alpha dog, if you will. Um, they also believe that you don't pay your linebackers. Do they need to look in the mirror, Jeffrey, Howie, the decision makers, and change the way that they're doing things, John? Yeah. Um, I think what we saw this year is the rest of the league moved ahead of us because they valued linebackers and blitzing and new schemes defensively and safety play uh creativity defensively uh with these sim pressures and 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 the new looks that were provided this year i mean from the get-go against our offense i mean from week one the patriots were doing this stuff they're tough we didn't we didn't have the right answers uh, blitzing can make a difference. Linebackers absolutely make a difference when they can bridge that gap between the you know the second and third level, the first and second level. They're the they're the players that these quarterbacks are reading a lot of times. The safeties a lot of times. You see teams attacking the middle of the field. You see the blitz packages being attacked in the middle of the field too. Something that we were never able to do this season. No, I I think we need to uh, really reevaluate the new concepts that have become commonplace in this league and that we have not been fully up to speed on like the simulated blitzes when you've got four or five or six guys up at the line of scrimmage milling around it might be four who are coming that's not technically a blitz Mm -hmm. but if you don't know which four it can create all sorts of problems and it has all year long for us it's been very frustrating uh, and hopefully a new staff will be able to get to the bottom of these problems that have been consistent all year long, and we haven't had the solutions for our players. All right, lastly, and this one's on a bittersweet note, uh, sweet because an unbelievable career, bitter because we, we likely may not see him play again uh, as an Eagle or in the NFL. Reports are that Jason Kelsey is going to retire. Um, it, it, to me, he's as unique a Philadelphia athlete as we've seen, a center who's beloved you don't usually see guys walking around in center jerseys, sixth rounder, you know, who who would have thought and turned into not only a Hall of Famer, but but a guy who was just a, a part of the fabric of the city. But how do you, how do you view his career and and his stepping away? Because let's face it, John, they're losing a first team all pro center also. Yeah, the best center in all of football, and he has been for uh what seems like forever. Yeah, uh, thirteen Jason years. Kelsey, he's he's my my favorite, my favorite Eagle athlete. We did a a, a vote on our show a few years back. I, I've never seen anyone so unique and talented and just out of left field while also so buttoned up. Man, he is he's fascinating and he's brilliant and and I am uh, such a huge fan. And I know he'll succeed in whatever he does, but I, I'm really saddened by the possibility that it might not be playing football anymore. And I don't know what the order is of things, how he wanted to put this out there. Yeah. I hope he's allowed to put it out there however he wants, however it's perfect for him, mm-hmm. because he deserves that. Again, love is the only, I mean, love is the operative word. I think we as fans, we love Jason Kelsey. And it's not just, uh, a pittance of love. It is love with all of <laughs> our soul and heart. And, and the guy epitomizes what we want to be.
Yeah. And, and speaking of, uh, first off, it, it's been a blast hanging with you all season, John. Let me just say that. And to everybody who hung with us throughout the Eagle season, we do appreciate it in, in, in a big way because uh, this has been fun. It's always every, each and every week to get to kind of get your insights and, and for us to, to kind of kick it around. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. So uh, wishing you all the best, my friend. Hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be talking real soon. Oh, okay? Thanks, Bert. Well, I, it's always fun. I enjoy every second we're together, man. Mixing it up, talking some shop. Let's go, baby. All right, John, always good seeing you, my friend. And thanks to all the great people at Bet Parks. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Richie, Rob, John Richie, Rob Ellis. Appreciate it.